Okay, so I have um, these two approaches. I can either keep working with my analytical sketch and the base color that's based on that, or I can work on the freehand base color. And you can see how that's a little bit more fun and silly. And I could work that up to the same with the same techniques from either end, right? But this would be more kind of a cartooning approach. And this is more a portraiture approach. And I can even have them just layered up on top of each other, which kind of works well. I might do that. Because that's the beauty of digital painting. If you use your layers effectively, you can kind of blend them together. So I'm going to keep working on these base color layers and keep adding until uh, everything within the analytical sketch is basically covered with something, right? And I call this the kill whitey phase because if you just have a white background, even though this kind of looks like a cool um, crayon drawing or something, which isn't a bad look, I want to fill in all this space, right, with my own choices. So I'm going to continue doing that. And you can create as many new layers as you like. And I'm still working at about 70% uh, opacity. And the beauty of digital painting is as you make a mark, you are already defining the other marks around it because we're keeping them mostly on the same layers. But what I don't like is having a, an abrupt edge. So I'm actually going to grow my canvas size to be bigger. I'm going to go ahead and make it 16 by 20 inches from the center. So I don't need to worry. I can always crop it later. So I can let my brush go all the way to the edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill the background. I'm going to unlock both the backgrounds and then fill them again, first with white. Then with gray. And then I'm going to actually delete this. I don't need that photo reference anymore. I have it here. And I am not rotoscoping. If I like, I can take the opacity down on my analytic sketch. So it's just kind of a guideline that's there. And keep working on top. Stealing colors. doing what I need to. I find it's helpful to have the white background as I'm still trying to fill it in, even though everything will look a little bit darker than it should. And remember, this is just like full spectrum coloring. Just because he's wearing kind of a dark blue uniform, I can use browns and oranges and all kinds of colors and purples to suggest that blue. I'm not stuck to only using lights and darks. Okay, and this is about uh, 30 minutes into the painting, and I still have not zoomed in at all. Okay. So I just find for myself it's best not to zoom in until I'm finished with all the base, base painting. So I've, I've effectively filled in all the white empty space with some color choice. And sometimes it can be weird color choices, which is fine. It's like flatting. Like these metals might fill them in with greens and blues.
Now, just because it's your base painting layer doesn't mean you can't put some highlights and a lot of variation. I'm just trying to get coverage. My next painting layer is going to not necessarily be a duotone layer. It's just going to be more refined painting where I, I use a lower opacity brush and kind of work within the, the tones I've already established. And that's why I'm going to bring in some funkier color as well. Remember with digital painting, all of your color is free. You don't need to buy new paints. So don't skimp on lots of color variations. They will help. And my goal here, and I hope the goal for you guys too with this assignment to get a full score on it, is not to get something that looks like this. It's to find my own kind of happy resolution to using digital programs as a painting approach. And the painters I most admire, at least at this point in my life, are not the ones that spend a long time painting each eyelash. It's more about kind of a personality and an improvisation in their work. So trying to keep that energy is what's interesting to me. I want each of you to find your own interest in the subject matter. So there's a blue I keep finding I want that I can't find. So I'm just going to paint it in, put it over here so that I can use it. I have lots of things around it, but Nothing in the reference, it's just directly there. So that's a good time to use your color. And sometimes it's helpful just to see swatches as well. And remember, you can always modify them, make them more saturated, make them lighter, whatever it might be. Got a little bit of blue in his eyebrows. I like that already in my painting, he's looking a little bit more um, doubtful of himself. <laughs> and if you're doing an, a pet portrait or something, there's nothing wrong in just making your, your dog cuter. Aging them down to a puppy. Uh, we have all the tools at our facility here. I can even complete his arm here. I'm trying to remember. Let's save my work there. Save it with my name. I might have to look into Admiral Nelson. I seem to remember that he only had one arm. And he lost an arm. But I might be thinking of someone else. Probably is. Political history is not my strong suit. But if you only had one arm, it'd be great to like, like pin that sleeve, right? Kind of pirate style. So I have Google opening up in the background. Maybe it will give me the answer. All right, how do I know once I have killed Whitey, once I've filled in enough space with my own color choices? Well, if I turn on the gray background, and it still looks like my subject, then good. 
But the problem is, you see, I lose all the highlights and stuff in here. So here's a nice little shortcut at this point, because I feel like I've mostly filled him in and can move on. So what can I do? What I can do is merge most of my base color layers. And the way I can do that, because I've painted them on a few different layers here, right? I have my analytic layer, I have this. What I'm going to do is make, select each of them, holding down command, select each of those layers. Then I'm gonna hit command J, which will make a duplicate of each of them. And then I'm gonna put those in a folder. And then I'm going to merge the folder, merge the group. So now I can turn all these off and I have them all on one layer together on a blank background, right? It's like a PNG that's combined of all my base painting. So let's call it that, base painting. You use your layers however you think makes sense. But the reason this is going to save me time is now I can just select the empty space around that base painting with contiguous turned on, right? And it gives me a big kind of chunky shape around it. And then I go to my white layer, which is unlocked, and I say select inverse, and then duplicate. So I'm doing a cookie cutter in white, right? And this becomes like my prime primer layer. And I can move that up right underneath my base painting. And now I've got the white in my base painting. So now I have truly chosen all of those shapes and all those colors. And if I feel like just because of the way the anti-alias selection extended the whites a little bit, what can I do? I can simply gouge and blur them a little bit to soften their edge. Not that much, about that much, and then just shrink them in on themselves. Command T, shrink. So just that it's a little bit inside. You can even warp it, kind of push it always to the inside. And then this just becomes a part of the painting I deal with, right? It does a nice offset to my uh, paint strokes there. And then of course I can, they're just layers that I can delete from. So I don't really need these anymore. And now I'm gonna save. I'm gonna merge it with the white. There we go. And then I'm going to move on to more refined painting. So this was the finishing of the base painting step where I have everything at 100% on one layer. And now I'm gonna do a new blank layer on top of that that is refined painting. And I'm going to use the same brush because even though I might change my brush settings a little bit, especially its opacity and its size, I want that same kind of brush feel throughout, right? Now I'm going to zoom in and I might zoom in on my reference as well. You can use the navigator for that. And now when I use my brush, I'm going to use it at about 40% opacity and things will, will build up much more slowly. So he has brown eyes, so I can kind of paint in his brown eyes. I'm going to go to a smaller brush, about half the size, start framing it in at this lower opacity, start fleshing out his eyelid and the subtlety 